Okay, uh, uh, this is the W60P Weller soldering iron right here. Uh, it's a very simple product. Naturally, to make it work, you just plug it in to the socket and the temperature will uh, turn on. This tool happens to be a temperature controlled tool. If you notice on the back end of this soldering tip right here, if you can see that, it's got a number seven on there. It's either gonna have a number seven or a number eight. Uh, that, all, that indicates the temperature that this tip is gonna operate under. This happens to be a 700 degree soldering tip. And if I said if it was an eight, it would be an 800 degree soldering tip. You always want to choose the largest tip that you can for your, uh, your application. That happens to be a long kind of a chisel tip, about a 32nd of an inch. We've got some of these tips that are as wide as like a quarter inch. Uh, so you, but that's where your temperature, when you plug that in, that is the temperature that that tip is going to be operating under. Simply slide it in here. Put the knurl back over it. Don't cross thread. Just be, make sure that you get the threads set up properly. Tighten it down. Yeah, I'm not doing very good there. Tighten it down. And then put it into the holder. Plug it into the wall and you're ready to go. Keep your sponge uh, damp and not drenched so that when you're wiping the soldering tip off, it cleans the soldering tip but it doesn't add too much water and always keep this clean. If you get too much flux buildup in that sponge, that'll get onto the tip and uh, cause uh, rapid oxidation of the soldering tip and heat doesn't transfer through oxidation. So that's basically a very simple product and that's how it's used. This is our WESD 51 soldering station. Uh, again, a very simple soldering station. You simply turn the unit on right there and you adjust your temperature right here, up or down. And this station happens to be locked. So uh, to unlock that soldering station, you need a magnetic wand to touch that ESD symbol and you'll uh, unlock the soldering station. And then that, that's your soldering pencil. That whole area is hot, so you naturally don't want to touch that while the uh, tool is on. You loosen up this knurl, slide the whole sleeve off the tool, and that's where you can change your soldering tips. This is here to protect your, your fingers from heat, and again, that whole area from here to here uh, is hot, so safety is uh, of, of primary concern. As you can see, your temperature is going to be right in the display there, and if it's unlocked, then you can adjust the temperature. Uh, to whatever temperature that you need to operate your soldering pencil. This sponge, as you can see, is not wet or anything, but it's, it's, it's rather dirty. So again, when you're wiping the soldering tip on a sponge like this, you're going to be picking up flux residue, uh, and it'll heat sink the soldering tip uh, if it's too wet. So you want to make sure that you keep these soldering sponges clean, and um, uh, without flux residue buildup, that will prevent rapid oxidation of a soldering tip. Oxidation does not transfer heat properly. So keep the sponge clean. Okay, um, this is the WR3000M rework station. Uh, you've got a 80 watt soldering pencil. Uh, there's multitude of different soldering tips that you can get for this tool. It's turned off right now and not plugged in. To remove that tip, you simply remove this retainer and the tip is going to be right here. That's the actual soldering tip uh, that is inside the pencil. As I said, uh, there are many, many different styles of soldering tips for whatever application that, you, that you're working on. Uh, to, you know, obviously, you don't do this while it's hot. You simply drop the soldering tip into the retainer. It comes out the end. You slide it over, tighten it up, finger tight. Don't, over, don't reef on this. Uh, you can actually open the retainer uh, and just snug and it'll work just fine. Okay, that's the WP80 soldering pencil. This is the DXV80 desoldering pencil. That is a 
uh, a solder uh, sucking tool to remove solder from uh, a through hole component or off a pad of a surface mount component. Uh, to change the tip out we have this handy dandy little tool here. Uh, on one end it's got that little hex. So you simply go over the tool and then you can remove that soldering tip and again don't do this while it's hot. If you notice on here there, there are no threads. This is what's called an eccentric and to place that back in you just put it back in here use this tool you can go right or left it just requires a snug and that uh, soldering tip is kind of bound inside the uh, shaft here uh, and it'll be locked in place especially when the heat is turned on. Very very important with these tools when you're using them after you have done several desoldering connections and I'm you know the number depends on on uh, how much solder that you're pulling in there uh, you have to clean these tools or they will clog so you remove that soldering tip place that off to the side with this same exact tool you pull the cap off and you have several drills here for the different size soldering tiplets. They have different size inside diameters for various components. So you want a larger inside diameter for larger through hole components and smaller inside diameters for small through, uh, uh, through hole components. And you want to take your tool here and run the tool into the tip itself to clean out any solder that's caught in there and I would you know it's not working right now because there is solder in there so when we, when we turn the tool on and get it hot you can run this in and out to keep that inside diameter cleaned out okay uh, next when the tool is hot you want to take a like a pipe cleaning brush like this it's a little wire brush and in that maintenance procedure you want to run this brush inside that shaft and clean that out and that is where you'll get solder accumulation up in here and you want to make sure that you get that cleaned out last thing you do is that you slide this back you lift it up and inside is the chamber that's where the solder that is pulled into the tool is collected that comes out you can you can see that there's solder in there right now. You want to clean that out, put that back in place. When you put it back into the tool, drop it in like this. And if you hit this button immediately, you'll note that it did seal that time. Many times it doesn't seal just exactly right. It'll get kicked up like that and it won't have a solid seal in there. So the technique is to pull it back drop it in place, slide it forward, and then lock it. And then grab your tip, put it back in place, gently secure it down like that, and you're good to go. So very, very important to keep this tool clean or it will clog on you. Put that back in the holder. Put this back here. Put the cap back on and that gets stored right there just like that. This is your hot tweezer. Uh, this goes around surface mount components. To change out the cartridge you simply rock and pull it out. You have a left and right. Just make sure that when you're putting the tool back in that you don't flip it upside down. It won't fit properly. You want left and right left and right snap back in place and the tools ready to go there are many different cartridges for these tools uh, as you can see the profile of that one is for you know larger uh, components with multi leads that you can get around all at one time and and reflow the component and pull them off very very handy tool while doing surface mount work and again snap it in place so now, 
The storage location is right up here in the holder. I'm going to put this back together. Put that in here. And so what we're going to do here, if you notice, I'm going to pull this over here. Uh, the soldering pencil we've got plugged into the base or into the stand. That is because this is a stop and go stand so that when this tool goes in and, and hits a micro switch that's down here, this tool starts to power down. So the tool itself is plugged into the stand and the stand is then plugged into uh, the port here on the tool. Now if you look, there's a little tab at the bottom. Line that tab up and then lock it in place. So you turn, you just go in straight, you take the collar and you turn to lock it. Again, never use force. If it doesn't go in properly or it's hard to turn, then one of the pins may be bent. So try not to force it. It should just turn very easily. If you look down here, you have vacuum and air. Uh, you want to make sure that you plug, we're going to plug in our desoldering tool now. You want to find that tab again, plug that in, rock it a little, lock it down. And this tube right here is, is the vacuum tube. Uh, if you notice, there's two different diameters here. That's the smaller diameter, larger diameter. That tube will fit right over that vacuum tube. You want to slide it up on there just like that. And again, if you work hard and get it stuck onto this one, you'll, it'll blow hot air as opposed to sucking hot air. So make sure that you plug the vacuum pencil into the vacuum port. Lastly, we'll plug in the hot tweezer. Same process. Line it up. And you're ready to go. So it's now ready to, you're ready to use the tool. On and off is right here. Now, we're going to let the tool heat up. It's going to take, you know, you've got a lot of mass to heat up here and some good mass in the pencil to heat up, so it's going to take a couple of seconds to heat up. So we'll just let it, as it, you know, powers itself on. And then what we, what we should look for now is that you have a solid red light here. If you look at one, two, three here, you watch that red light when I hit the button. Three, now I'm monitoring port three in here. Now I'm monitoring port one. The goal there is if you're going to adjust the temperature on port one, uh, you have to have that red light on port one. So now if we go to adjust the temperature, which is right now it's sitting at 300 degrees, and we naturally need more heat to do a desoldering uh, process, we have to turn the heat up on that. So we have to make sure that we're, we're monitoring port one in the display, simply hit the up and down arrows, and that'll adjust your temperature. And you'll always, you know, 700 degrees is a good place to start, 650, 700 degrees, depending on your, the mass of your board and what you're trying to solder. But that's what you want to make sure. If, for an example, if I'm monitoring port 2 right now and I adjust my temperature thinking I'm trying to adjust this temperature, you're actually adjusting your desoldering tool. So I'm on port 2, and there's where I adjust the temperature right there, just like that. You can put that wherever you need uh, to do your process. Lastly, I'm going to jump over to port 3. So I'm on port three, I've got an arrow in here, or I mean a dot dash in here. If you notice, when I pick the tool out, there goes the temperature. Okay, you see how that works? So that when I put the tool back down, it's gonna start blinking, and that means the tool is going into a standby. It's just powering itself down when it's not being used. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong here, it's doing exactly what the tool is supposed to do. And when you pick it out, it'll go on to temperature. So again, I'm monitoring port three. I pick the tool out, and if I want to adjust my temperature, I was at 650. You can adjust that to wherever you need to take it. And then back into standby. 
Um, the buttons here, the air button, and the, this is a vacuum pickup. That that is in it, it's going to work with um, this port uh, right here. That is the active port. Uh, there is no vacuum pickup pencil here with this unit. Um, it is available if you need it. So that just turns on that little port right there. That's all it does. Uh, you do not have a hot air pencil on this station. It does have the capability for a hot air pencil that would plug into port one. That is where you adjust your airflow right there by hitting the air and then making the adjustment here. But you don't have an air uh, hot air pencil. So I would not worry about this right now unless you add a hot air uh, pencil to this particular unit. These three buttons right here are presets. And I wouldn't necessarily, for, for all uh, intents and purposes, I would not worry about using your presets. Um, uh, you can actually have three preset temperatures for each channel. Um, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, just if you need more or less temperature, just make sure that you adjust right here onto, onto the port that you want to adjust and then turn the temperature up or down to, to suit your needs. Okay, That's you know basically the functionality of the unit. It's got an internal pump uh, and so you know it's a self-contained unit so you can pick this up and put this anywhere and plug it in and it'll work with all these features. Um, lastly, um, I would say Turn the unit off as a maintenance procedure. I'm going to pull that off. These little ports actually come out. Inside these ports, there's a filter. That's the airflow, so it's pulling through here. That filter is there to protect the internal workings of the uh, pump inside. If the tool doesn't get cleaned or this tube is removed, uh, then you would literally suck solder into the tool and damage it. So you will per periodically want to open this up and make sure that's not, that's obviously very clean and no problem there, but you want to make sure that that is clean and not doesn't have a lot of solder collecting there. If it does, then you've got to shut the unit down, take this out, get a new pack, put a new filter in there, and then put the tool back in use. So again, we can just slide that in here. That just turns and just kind of sets and locks in place. That is basically the, uh, the functionality of the WR3000M rework unit. When you hit the vacuum, uh, if that light continually comes on, that means you're starting to clog. Uh, when that light, that little red light is coming on, that's the time to uh, take and clean out the chamber and clean out the tube to make sure that that soldering path is free for the solder to flow. Um, that is the WR3000M.